Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters and respected elders, I hope you are all well. Welcome to one of our videos where we will be doing mini short Islamic stories. And today I have brother Mustafa with me. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good to have you at Thank our studio you. today. So, brother, we are going to talk about the story of the person who killed. 99 people can you kindly tell us about the story bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala amma ba'd rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli alhamdulillah thank you for having me first of all i appreciate that and uh, may we all benefit from each other inshallah as uh, brother Shah told us, we're going to have a mini series of Islamic stories and where we can a lot, uh, learn a lot, inshallah. The story of uh, the person who killed 99 people. This is a hadith, Sahih hadith, in which you can find it in different narrations in Bukhari, in Muslim, Ibn Majah, different wordings and uh, a story where the Prophet Muhammad sallam, gave us the story. There was a man who killed 99 people. Yes, 99 people. So one day he decided, okay, it's time for me to repent, for me to give up. Probably the assassin decided, you know, I will retire now. So he looked for somebody to give him advice and he looked for somebody who's learned. He asked around somebody who knows something. And he went to a place, he was directed to a monk and he goes to a monk and he tells the monk I have killed 99 people but now I want to repent do I have a chance would I be forgiven would my repentance accepted the monk looked at him he goes you killed 99 people Repentance is done for you. You have nothing for you to repent. It's gone. It's finished. There's no savior for you. You're done. Finished. And the man gets angry. The way the monk was telling him, you have nothing left. It's finished. All of this. He gets really angry, frustrated. Takes out his swords. Chop off the head. Makes it a hundred. <laughs> now he's angry. And now he goes from village to villages in his city and he looks for someone else. He asks people to find out somebody who's a well learned person. And they direct him to a scholar, somebody with knowledge. And he goes to him and he goes to him, I have killed 100 people. I need to know if I want to repent, would I be forgiven? And the knowledge person, the, knowledge, the learned person, the scholar looks at him and tells him, what is stopping you and repentance? What is there between you and repentance? There should be no barrier. Nothing should stop you from repenting. Nothing should stop you from asking forgiveness. Yes, you can do it, but with conditions. He says, what is the condition? He tells him, leave this city. Move from this city. And he directs him to another city. And he tells him, go to that city where the people there are pious people, they worship uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, they fast, they do all the good things, you know, they're really, really good people. Leave this place where you killed 100 people because it's full of evil, full of corruption, go to that place. And he decides, okay, so he gets on his horse, he makes his way to the city where he was told to ask forgiveness and repent. On the way, Malakul Maut, the angel of death, comes to him and he takes his soul. Now, he died in the middle of the road. He did not get to where he was going. The angels of Rahmah, of mercy, come down. And at the same time, the angels of hellfire, those who torment, they come down. Everyone wants to take him. 
the angel of mercy say, this person had the intention to do, uh, to ask for forgiveness and to repent. He had the good intention and he was going to a good place. So we take him. The angel of hellfire say, no, he did have the intention, but he did not. And he did not kill one person or two people. He killed 100 people. And the last person being a monk, somebody who was worshipping. So there's no way. And he did not even get the chance to repent. So we take him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends another angel to come and decide between these two angels who are arguing. To be more like a referee. So they ask him, you judge. He says, okay. Since he left the city where he committed all this evil and he was going to another, uh, to another city where he was going to be, uh, do the good things, we measure the distance where he came from to where he is, where his body is. And we also measure the, uh, the distance between his body to the city where he's going. Find out where he is closer. If he's closer to the city where he came from, then the angels of hellfire take him. Okay. And if he's closer to the other city, the angels of mercy will take him. And they measure it. And he was in the middle. Subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it that he become closer to the city where he was going to repent by a span. A hand of a span or yard or whatever. So... Just a little bit. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expands the, the earth. He makes him to be closer to that city. And the angels of Rahmah, the angels of mercy, take him and he becomes a person of Jannah. SubhanAllah. That, uh, that is quite a touching story, you know. And, you know, uh, what, what do you think we should learn and take away from this story, Brother Mustafa? What do we learn? Subhanallah, this story is a short story, but there's so many, many, many lessons we can learn. And I'm going to go bit by bit. The first thing I want to touch, I'm not going to go in order, but first thing we learn, when this man decided he wants to repent, he went to the monk, mm -hmm. right? And he asked a monk, and the monk told him, you can't be forgiven as you have killed 100 people. I mean, 99 people. You have killed them, so it's done for you. So what, and then he decides to kill the monk. So what we learn, first of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you do not know. Mm -hmm. So when you need to find out something, to learn something, whether it's Islamic stuff or non-Islamic, especially... Islamic stuff, go to somebody who has knowledge, somebody who knows what he's talking about, somebody who studied that topic. You can get somebody who studied the fiqh but has no idea in hadith, or you can somebody who's well uh, educated in hadith but not in fiqh, or you know, different things. But go to the right people, ask your information to the right people, because if you do not, you ask the wrong people, and you will be misguided. You will go, you know, you, you, a lot of things will go wrong. That's one of the lessons we take. Ask the right people. Because what happened when he went to ask the word, a learned person, the person who knows what he was talking about, he was knowledgeable, he directed him. He told him, yes, there's this and this, what to do. And he, this person saved himself. Another thing we learn, if you have no knowledge about something, don't answer it. Just say, no, I don't know. They say, saying I don't know is half of knowledge. Imam Malik says, to, to say I don't know is half of knowledge. Imam Malik, uh, rahimahullah, was a big mufti of Medina. They used to say, la yufta wa malik fil Medina. No fatwa is given while Imam Malik was in Medina. No one was allowed to give fatwa. They all knew he was, uh, he was the one. But then some people came and asked him 40 questions. And he only answered out of them 40 questions. He only asked a little bit. And most of the same of them, he said, I don't know, I don't know, and I don't know. People looked at him, you're supposed to be the big mufti. And you said, I don't know. He said, well, I don't know. 
So if you don't know, tell the person, I don't know. Because if you answer it in a wrong way, you don't just cause problem for the person, you cause problem for yourselves. Because this person was told this person, repentance is finished for you. He caused problem for this guy to commit more sins, mm -hmm. to do a killing. So he caused problem for this guy not to repent. He stopped repentance from this guy. And another thing causing problem for your own self because you answered a question which you did not know. The guy got angry, took out his sword, chopped off the head. Mm. That's one thing. And that's one thing. If you don't know, just, you know, say I don't know. And another uh, thing we can take is the first thing is intention. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, every Action is by intention. Whatever you intend, Allah will give you. If it's a good uh, deed, Allah will, you know, will, will reward you for it. And, and the most important thing we can learn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Do not despair. Do not give up hope from Allah. And this person his intention, he killed a hundred people and he never gave up hope. The, no, the well-learned person, the scholar, told him, go to these people, go to this place. You know, he gave him that, uh, 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 what do you call it? He gave him what to do, the, uh, the weapons to use. Whatever you do, don't give up. Yes, you can. No, that means whatever, you know, how many sins, crimes, all these big, if you were a big gangster, Forget 100 people, even if you kill 1,000 people. You've committed all these adultery, drugs, and everything. Allah still gives you the chance. The, 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 the gates of repentance are always open. Allah says, Allah forgives all the sins, regardless how big your sins are. It, don't give up hope. Don't say, oh, I've done this, I have done that. Allah is not going to forgive me. Brother, have you killed 100 people? You haven't. There's somebody who killed 100 persons and never even repented, but he had intention to repent. And he did what he was told to do. He followed the instruction. And because of, Allah, of that, his niyya was good. Allah helped him. And he carried on. And he could have stayed uh, in, in where he was, but he decided to do what he was told. And one other thing is that if you want to repent, you want to go straight, if you are in drugs or if you're in gangs or whatever, any evil action you're in, Allah's door is open, but with conditions. One of the conditions, leave the environment you are in. That's why this guy was told, leave this city, go to another city. If your friends who surround you are corrupted or bad people, make new friends. Surround yourself with people who pray. Surround yourself with people who fast, who do good deeds, who give charity. And you see yourself rubbing onto them. Move from that place. I mean, sometimes we cannot move, of course. We cannot move houses. We cannot move areas. That's why you see even sometimes like you, uh, uh, a young person who gets into, uh, goes to prison when he comes out, the government, uh, they will tell him, you're not allowed to go to this area. Mm -hmm. Because that is the area where he hangs around with the bad people. Correct. So they tell him, go to some other places. So that is why if you want to repent, first thing, leave every bad, evil action of your past behind. Leave it aside. And go follow the good people. Follow the people who will show you examples of what to do. Who They will tell you, come on, let's go pray. Let's do good things. Let's go do that, you know. And in that way, Allah will help you as well. And that's why we see this person, he was in the middle, but because he left the place, he was uh, doing evil things, and his niyyah was good, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his mercy, never give up with Allah's mercy, with uh, whatever happens. With his mercy, and he managed to go to Jannah. And he never even prayed, never fasted, never done any good thing, but his intention was good, and he was going towards the good thing, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped him. Right. Subhanallah, brother. Thank you very much. That was really, really touching. Like I say, you know, we, like Brother Mustafa said, you know, we all have flaws within us. But if we make intention with sincerity, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide us in that direction and uh, you know inshallah we'll reach what we need to reach so my dear brothers and sisters once again uh, please like share and subscribe to the channel inshallah all the videos will help you and also remember once you share it will help other people as well Could there be other people that will benefit from this so uh, join us once again where we talk about more short stories. I want to thank Brother Mustafa for joining us today. Thank you. Really, really, you know, heartfelt. And uh, take care of one yourselves and each other as well. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.